it's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Here's our host, Randy Wilburn. Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn. I'm excited to be with you today, as I always am. And today, listen, I got to tell you guys, when I find people for this podcast, sometimes it happens with a little serendipity involved, and sometimes it happens because I've connected with an individual and maybe we've worked on something. And so this is kind of a little bit of both. The individual that's sitting in front of me, Alex Howland, is founded a program called Dovetail that I thought every woman in Northwest Arkansas needs to hear about. I met Alex while working on the Place Summit event this past year. If you're not familiar with it, we'll actually have, I've done an episode with Wes Craiglow from their Urban Land Institute and all the amazing things that they're doing. And the ULI Northwest Arkansas region had a, had a Place Summit, which was absolutely amazing. And so I got to work with Alex, I got to work with Megan Brown and several other individuals over the course of several days in November of 2022. And so Alex and I, we, we built a friendship and then I ran into her at a, what was that event called? It's Creative Mornings. Yes, Creative okay. Mornings. Yeah. yeah. And so Creative Mornings is an event that I just recently learned about just a couple of months ago. And I went to my first one about A month prior to the one that I met Alex at, I saw Alex, I ran into Alex and she was talking about an event that she's doing. And I was like, oh man, this is perfect. I'd love to share this event because one of the things that I hear a lot about is that we don't hear enough about, you know, women run events that are happening in Northwest Arkansas. And so I saw what Alex was capable of doing through the Place Summit. And I said, well, if she, even the small amount that she did at the Place Summit, if she's going to do that for Dovetail, this is going to be a special event. So, Without further ado, I want to welcome Alex Howland to the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. How are you doing? I'm doing so great. Thank you, Randy, for having me. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That goes without saying. So listen, you know, for the uninitiated, please, as we always do, I'd love for you to just give your superhero origin story and you can go as far back as you want. You want to go back to diapers, you can, (laughs) but if you want to just give us, you know, you can give us the cliff note version, but just tell us who Alex Howland is. Ooh. I love to start it off with, I'm lightning in a bottle. (laughs) (laughs) That's kind of my, that's my catchphrase. So I, man, I've been working with women in particular for about 10 years. And something that my mother always taught me from the age of a diaper, I was probably in diapers, is, you know, we as women have to really make our own way. My mom immigrated here from Italy when she was, you know, a baby. And it was really impactful to see her be able to come from literally nothing and grow into a really successful woman-owned business. I mean, that's wow. what she's done throughout yeah. her life. What kind of business? She's a real estate agent. Okay, cool. <laughs> Actually, Very cool. I should say that. She's a broker. She's a broker. So yeah, okay, um, which cool. is funny because Play Summit is where we met. And, right. and I've always been interested in real estate, but I also did not want to follow exactly in her footsteps. Sure. So I had to kind of make my own way. And oddly enough, I circled right back into it. And so that's <laughs> I think that's kind of funny that we don't want to be our parents when we're growing up. And no. then somehow we we typically evolve into them. So, yeah, yeah, both my parents were teachers. My father was an artist and a teacher. My mom was a teacher. And some way, shape or form, I've kind of taught too. So yeah. yeah, you're absolutely right about that. It's And I, I think it's just how you know we're impacted at a very young age by our parents sure. um, in any way, shape or form. But, but yeah, I really just, I've always been really involved in helping women and really anyone that's kind of been in a more marginalized group. So that's always been at heart for me. And honestly, just working with women has been so impactful in my life. Yeah. Like I have such an amazing group of women here locally. And truly, they are one of the reasons that I'm starting this because all of them were like, man, I don't have a place to connect. Like, where do you find all these, you know, networking groups? And it's almost a dovetail is going to be a culmination of all those different networking experiences that I've had over the years. Yeah. But really for all women, because there's not really one that's sourced for all, which is the part that I love about this the most. I love that. I love that. So 10 years working with Mm -hmm. women in some way, shape or form, obviously as a woman, you, this is something that is near and dear to your heart. You seem extremely passionate about this program. Why don't you just kind of 
walk our audience through what Dovetail is and when it's taking place. It's actually an event Mm -hmm. that you're going to have in January of 2023. So at the time of us recording this in December of 2022, this episode will come out sometime before the event in January. And if you're listening to this after the January event date, you'll have contact information so you can connect with Alex and find out other programs that she will be doing. Because I'm I'm assuming that this will be kind of the launching Mm -hmm. of a number of initiatives that will birth out of the Dovetail program. You're exactly right. So Dovetail, the initial, the inaugural event is going to be on January 19th, 2023. And it will be generously sponsored and hosted by Theater Squared. They're graciously partnering with us so that we can have a really wonderful facility to welcome in a very community-driven way, all of the women who will be participating. So the first event is going to be limited to 100. That's really intentional. I wanted this to remain on the smaller side of things because I do feel like it's going to sell out pretty quick. Yeah. And we've actually already sold a significant amount of tickets, which I'm just honestly so thrilled and, and feel so supported by this great community. So with that, Theater Squared, January 19th, it will be an all day ish event. Right. But the really exciting thing is we've tried to we've tried to schedule this around women's schedules, right? Because sure. so many times events start at like 8 a.m. and it's really hard for women <laughs> to drop off kids or get all their house stuff done that they need to get done, get to work, get the emails answered, and then get to an event by 8 a.m. It's that's tough. So but we will be starting at 9 a.m. just okay. to give a little bit of leeway and then we will have an optional happy hour that's going to be sponsored by Woman Run, which I'm sure you're probably familiar with. I am. With. They've been yes. on the podcast, yeah. Meredith Lowry and the rest of the group of yeah. Woman Run. So. so Meredith was actually the very first person I ever told about the idea of launching Dovetail, which was great. She's been a longtime mentor and she's really supported me through a lot of crazy efforts that I've had over the years. So I really appreciate her you know, partnership on this with me. And yeah, so Women Run will be We'll launch that evening with their normal programming and they'll be sponsoring the happy hour portion of this. Okay, cool. Very cool. So why don't you walk us through kind of what is going to be just kind of the overall tenor of the event. So we, I get there at nine, obviously I will not be there, but you've graciously invited my wife to come. So my wife will be there. I'm sure she will tell me all about it, but what, you know, kind of walk me through what you hope the day will be like. Well, first of all, we'd be happy to have you drop it if your heart (laughs) desires. I'm absolutely happy to do that. So we are going to start the day with a really mindful and intentional grounding session. um, That's actually going to be by Mashaya Yoga. She is a local yoga, I guess, yogi is Mm -hmm. the correct term. Sure. And she's going to lead us with a really beautiful movement, really light movement just to start the day and some intention setting. The grounding work that she does in her yoga studio is really helpful to kind of clear your mind and get you into the right headspace so that everything that you're doing throughout the day is very intentional. Then we're going to have PowerPoints, which is a play on the term PowerPoint (laughs) because we're not going to have any boring PowerPoints. And so our PowerPoint leaders are going to have a really impactful 10 to 15 minute conversation presentation, whatever format they choose. And it's going to be a little bit different for each of them. And that's also very intentional because we don't want this to be another conference where you're just listening to people speak at you. We really want this to be engaging and interactive for the attendees. So after each PowerPoint, which is 10 to 15 minutes, we're going to have a conversation leader or conversation starter. Haven't really nailed down all the terms yet. So if your listeners have any ideas, would love to welcome some suggestions. So the conversation starter is then going to lead an open forum, which that is truly what makes Dovetail different than any conference, symposium, leadership initiative, networking experience that I've ever been to. You know, you always have a Q&A, but that's really short-lived. And, and while those are great, it's not super engaging, right? It's kind of a, here's my question, here's your answer. Yeah. So this will be open forum where maybe somebody really felt impacted by a statement that was made during the PowerPoint. And they really want to feel those feelings and emotions. And so maybe in order to do that, they will need to kind of walk through how they felt during that moment. Like, hey, this impacted me in this way, and I'm not sure why. And maybe it's an uncomfortable thing. And actually, I really openly welcome that because I don't feel like we as women especially have the opportunity to go into those really deep feelings of uncomfortability. Like that's been a big thing for me over the last two years, 
honestly, COVID kind of brought that up. Like, let's lean into the uncomfortable because that's usually where the biggest work grows from. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it sounds like it'll be intimate enough with 100 people. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you'll use one of those beautiful theaters at Theater Squared. And shout out to Theater Squared. I'm, I'm actually an ambassador for them. So it's great that they are. I mean, what a lot of people don't realize is that more than just plays happen Mm -hmm. at Theater Squared. I mean, they have an outstanding commons bar, which is also where you can go get lunch there. Mm -hmm. You can get coffee there. And then the facilities are beautiful. Their conference room is beautiful. And I don't want to stick a commercial in here for T2, but they are an outstanding facility that can be utilized for a number of different Mm -hmm. purposes like this event for Dovetail. So yeah, they've been a fantastic partner and and. It's just really wonderful to lean into our community partners. That's something that I really want to grow through Dovetail is more community partnerships. I feel like that's really important. And, you know, there's a lot of opportunity out there, especially in Northwest Arkansas. I mean, we have so much opportunity that, you know, if people just know about it, then they can utilize it for maybe they have an event or a gala or, you know, a conference, like you were saying. And it could be a really great opportunity for them to get to experience the theater in a different way. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see what the feedback is yeah. afterwards. So, okay. So let's talk a little bit about, I mean, you said you're involved with Women Run and, and what Meredith is doing with that. And that's, you know, pretty much leaning towards the business side of things. Mm-hmm. I imagine that with Dovetail, you're going to actually be able to touch upon a number of different areas that are part of how women do what they do. Mm -hmm. And so can you kind of give us an idea of just some of those areas that you hope to to talk about? Yes, actually, I have to give you credit because you mentioned whenever we were at Creative Mornings Legacy, and I just posed that to a few women and they're like, oh my God, I love that. You know, that's (laughs) not something women think about in their daily lives. And that's unfortunate that, but we're just not taught, you know, usually from an early age. And that's fine. You know, we have the opportunity to speak about it and grow from this. So legacy is going to be one of them. Generational wealth and building generational wealth is really important. I feel like I personally have, you know, started that on my own with seeing my mother kind of literally start from nothing Nothing. and and work her way up to, you know, making million dollar sales and in the real estate world, you know, and as a child, I didn't really understand what that meant until I got older. And I was like, oh, that's a huge deal. Like, why did I not realize that at a younger age? Right. Because she didn't teach it to me, you sure. know, and, and that's okay. It's just, you don't know what you don't know, right? And so seeing that as an adult, you know, really changed my perspective on what money means and what money is and how we can actually use that to take back power in a really interesting way. And so generational wealth building is going to be huge in this conference. And, and again, this is open for, I said conference, this gathering. So again, this is very open forum. So leaning into those uncomfortable topics, finance is really hard for a lot of women. So that's that's really important. We will talk just a little bit about business because it is in our everyday life. And what business means to one person may be completely different than another. This is open for, you know, the stay-at-home mom, the small business owner, the entrepreneur, the corporate woman, the person who's maybe trying to leave the corporate world and look into entrepreneurship or what it would look like to stay home. So it's really open for all. I mean, I want to make sure that that gets out there because it's not often that you see all of those people in the same room. Yeah. And so there will be business. It'll be a smaller portion of this gathering for the most part. And then some of the other things is really providing those thought provoking conversations to lead into lasting relationships. So oftentimes you go to, you know, an event, a networking opportunity and you leave with a business card. Like we don't want you to bring your business cards. You know, we want you to bring your thoughts and those deeper conversations are going to dive into, I mean, really just like the intersection of where women are right now and where we want to go. So I hope that answers your question. Not all the, I hate to say topics, but you know, I know we'll be talking about some diversity efforts. I know we'll be talking about all the things that you would probably end up seeing at a conference, but in just a more open for format, open forum way. And I almost forgot, but mental health and wellness, that is a very important thing that has changed significantly since COVID, right? So mental health and wellness is going to be a big, big topic that we discuss. Well, and I think that's, that is huge because, I mean, everybody struggles with mental health issues in some way, shape or form, whether because they are struggling with them personally or they know somebody that is dealing with them. Yeah. 
And of course, the pandemic brought out, well, let's just say it brought out a lot of challenges and exposed a lot of the issues that we had kind of put under the surface Mm -hmm. because we were just busy with life. Mm -hmm. And then when everything slowed down and we had a chance to be in front of each other on a regular basis, we realized, oh, wow, some things in me are broken. I need to get them fixed. And Mm -hmm. I think it's important. So, and I think, you know, it's funny because I have these conversations with my wife a lot and I'm just going to share this is not dirty laundry or anything, but one of the conversations that my wife had when she was talking about going back into the workforce after being a stay-at-home mom, a homeschool mom, the whole nine yards, was just a simple fact that, you know, I want to go back into the workforce, but I also can't go back into the workforce and still do everything that I was doing before that, you know, as because, you know, because I have wife responsibilities, I have mother responsibilities, mm-hmm. and then I have I will have employee responsibilities if I'm working for somebody. And so you know, we've kind of gone back and forth and it's like, well, how do you, I know there are a lot of people, a lot of women that are like, want to get back into the workforce and how do you navigate that Mm -hmm. and get your partner or whomever to be on the same page as far as that's concerned? Because it's like, yeah, in the back of my mind as a guy, of course, I'm thinking, man, all right, who's going to cook dinner now? Mm -hmm. Who's going to do these things that need to be done? You know, washing the clothes, all this other stuff. So these are this is that that real talk, right? Mm-hmm. Where the rubber meets the road when these things happen. And I would imagine that there are a number of women that will have these epiphany moments at this event where they start to say, yeah, I do want to do these things. How do I do them? How do I have these conversations? And how do I get you know, buy-in from my significant other if they're not single and get everybody on the same page? I'm so glad you said that because one of the biggest challenges that I've seen with friends who you know, are in a partnership, marriage, whatever you want to call it, you know, they're like, I would love to go and do X, Y, and Z, but I can't because I have to take care of, you know, the house, the kids, the laundry. the. And I think what a lot of women don't remember or, or maybe don't think about is, yes, maybe it's going to cost you a little bit of money, but there are services that you can hire out to help with you a lot of different things. And also, your partner buy-in. That's like, those are the two things that people forget about. And I don't even know if it, I don't even know if it it comes to mind, you know, because a lot of the times, like I've had this struggle in my own marriage and I have a very supportive partner, but you know, sometimes he'll be like, did you do the dishes? I'm like, you can also do the dishes. (laughs) It's like just as much time as it takes for you to ask me, you could have already started them, you know? And so, but I think it's all about being on the same page. And so if you can get on the same page and maybe learn how to have those conversations, because here's the reality. Not everybody can afford to go to couples therapy or counseling. You're very right about that. And a lot of people have to rely on their friends and their network groups to be able to discuss some of these harder things. And and this is going to be a really open and safe space for that. So Yeah. Well, and I'm glad you mentioned that. And that's important, right? Because sometimes we, a lot of us, we collectively, but I mean, especially I've heard it from other women that they just don't feel like they have a place to go. Even my wife has said, like, I joke with her, she has this group of girlfriends and I call it the sister circle, right? Because they, they <laughs> get it. together, you know, yeah. they don't get together that often, but when they do, you know, they really do like, so, so like she'll get together with her little sister circle group and they, they might, You know, like when she does, and if she stays out till like 2 a.m. in the morning, she's not out at a club or something like that. She's at one of the women's houses and they're just kind of, you know, having conversations and having quality time. And it's just, it's kind of like when guys go into their man caves or something like that. Although most of the times there's usually beer and a game involved, but you know, it is important. And Mm -hmm. I know that that time is important for her. And so I can, I could see why an event like Dovetail will really speak to some of the intrinsic needs that most women have Mm -hmm. to have some connection with other women and and just to be able to share. And as you said earlier, and you use that word, I'm sure it'll be used over and over, a safe space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I love it. But yeah, what else? Well, I mean, I so I guess, you know, what I wanted to say, now you've been here in Northwest Arkansas for how long? Almost six years. Okay. So almost Mm -hmm. six years. Where are you originally from? Little Rock. Little Rock. Okay. So this area, what would you say is unique about Northwest Mm. Arkansas, especially for women that you may not have experienced in Little Rock? And and also because one of the things that we try to do is to paint a picture for people that are coming here Mm -hmm. as to what they can expect, regardless of who you are. You know, I've had people listen to this podcast that are coming from 
the southern part of the state. I've had this people listening to this podcast that are coming from California. Yeah. And everybody has a different experience and a different expectation when they get to Northwest Arkansas. So what has your experience been like being here in Northwest Arkansas? That's a great question because I get really emotional about this, by the way, because I did not feel like I had a community in Little Rock, even though I was born and raised there. And, you know, yeah, I know it's crazy, but I just never really felt like I belonged anywhere. And so I moved out of the state for a little bit, you know, during undergrad. And when I came back, you know, I was like, I'm never staying in Arkansas. This is like the worst. You know, I had that whole mindset um, after leaving, which I think a lot of people do that with their hometowns. Yeah, it's sure. not, you know, it's, it's relatable. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, you know, and then I got married and after college, I got married and, you know, we moved to Little Rock. We ended up moving back to Little Rock. And so I thought that I could go right back into my old friend groups, you know, from high school and college. And um, it just wasn't the case. And so I This sounds terrible, but I kind of gave my husband an ultimatum. I was like, we either leave Little Rock or like, I'm leaving Little Rock. (laughs) Like, it's one or the other. And he was on the exact same page as me, actually. And so we, he applied for tons of jobs at the time. I didn't really have like a, I wasn't really sure where my career was going, but he knew exactly what he wanted to do. And Mm so kind of leaned on him to figure it out for us. And anyways, he ended up getting a job with the city of Fayetteville. And I'm going into a little bit of backstory here because it'll help this story kind of dovetail together. (laughs) So we get here, he's working for the city, absolutely loves it. Like it's his dream job. And, you know, it took me a minute because I actually kept my job in Little Rock and they let me work remote before that was like a real thing. (laughs) Because this was back in like 2017, 2018. And all that to say, I finally realized after a few months, I was like, I need to get a community here. And I think I finally have the ability to do that in a new place, you know, where I don't know anybody. And I did. And it was like very, just so harmonious. I mean, I met, you know, one friend, actually, she's like my second friend in Northwest Arkansas. And we're still best friends to this day. I mean, we see each other weekly, we talk daily. And, you know, we've, we've started like a little mini side business together. Like, it's just so great to see the community that's grown here. But for someone that's coming from the outside, you know, Northwest Arkansas has a really shiny, shiny outside. And that sphere is, I mean, it's truly relevant because it is a shiny place. I don't know how else to describe it, but it's this really iridescent, beautiful area that is not like any other part of Arkansas, honestly. I mean, it's just really not. And I've I've lived in other parts of the state. And so um, I feel like I can say that with confidence, but the community that I've organically grown here has been so supportive. They believe in small business. They believe in helping the little guy, even though we have the big giants here. Sure. And that's pretty special. Yeah. I mean, I don't I don't know many places who try to give just as much of their money to, you know, the small like mom and pop shops as they do to, you know, some of the the bigger corporations. And it's really beautiful. And honestly the type of support that I've seen just from leaving the my corporate job and it wasn't really corporate, it was nonprofit, but essentially nonprofit job and and launching my own business has been just I don't know what else to compare it to. It was like super scary to yeah. leave my job, you know, a, a safe job where and I'm doing quotes here as because I don't know that you can really call any job safe, but right. it felt very safe and it felt like you know, I knew I was going to get a paycheck every two weeks. And it's not the same when you're a small business owner, but the amount of just arms being wrapped around me was pretty impactful. And I feel like it was, it was unlike anything else I'd ever experienced from, from living in other places. So that's yeah. cool. And, and I mean, that's a great statement for, for Northwest Arkansas. Certainly. As you were saying that, all I could hear in my head is Michael Stipe singing Shiny Happy People, right? I could (laughs) hear that R.E.M. song. So would you say that, because I think this would actually be something important for people that are going to, women that are going to come and participate in Dovetail, that, you know, most people don't step out of their comfort zone Mm -hmm. to try something like starting a business or something along those lines. So do you think that, or is one of your hopes that women that come to an event like this realize that the support system is greater than they believe it to be. Mm -hmm. And that for those that have had a dream to start a business or to do something outside of the norm of what they've done, 
that this is the time and the place and the space to do that. Yeah, I was actually just talking to my office mate, Elizabeth Pringer, who is the one that came up with the name Dovetail. I want this to be a place where people come together and create a really, really incredible relationship. And that could dive deeper into a business partnership. Or maybe it's just the connection that they needed to understand how to go about and get a loan or a grant to start a business. Maybe that means that somebody knows about a you know, space that's opening up on the square that is affordable and rent. Maybe that's not true, but maybe it is, you know, and they can actually start their dream business. I see small businesses all the time opening up on the square or near downtown. And and that's where our small business thrives in this area. Specifically, I'm talking about Fayetteville, but I think the same is true for downtown Springdale. You know, Cave Springs is like popping up like crazy. I mean, I love Cave Springs. How cute. You know, Bentonville, I think the same goes for there as well. So I want this to be a place where people come together in any way, shape or form and do some, maybe something really scary comes out of it. And I hate to use the word scary, but I don't, I mean, maybe it is, maybe it's like all this fear and then it all goes away because they're like, oh, I have a support system through these three new women that I met at this, you know, gathering. That would be really special. And I actually intend to have a lot of surveying and a lot of demographic and and just information grabbing after the event is over because I think it's really important to show people the tangible realizations that come out of this. The yeah. whether it's, you know, a new business starting or someone leaving their job to, you know, start the side hustle that they've always wanted and they just know that they can't do it all. So and also I just wanted to say no one can do it all. Like that is such a like I feel like that's a term that gets thrown out there a lot. Like be the woman that wants to do it all. Like no, you can pick and choose. You don't have to do it all. It's okay. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's exactly. okay. <laughs> no, it is okay. Yeah. So, but I think just having an event like this is going to be huge because it will push some people out of their comfort mm-hmm. zone and yeah. into a place where they realize, oh, well, if she's going to do it, I can probably yeah. do it too. Or if she's yeah. already done it, I'm going to do it. You yeah. know, and sometimes you just need to see those examples out in front of you and then you get out of the boat yourself, yeah. if you will, if I can use that expression. Absolutely. And, and I think that's going to be important. So, yeah. yeah. So tell me as we as we wind this up, what do you hope to be like at the end of the day of this Dovetail event? What are you hoping to see happen beyond just that day on the 19th mm. of January? I truly hope it paves the way for new possibilities for women. I mean, I think that's kind of a summation of of everything we've said today. And I man, if just like one person jumps out of their comfort zone and, you know, makes that big move, whether it's a physical move or, you know, maybe it's the business move or maybe it's taking business out and staying home. Yeah. One major leap could be the difference in a woman who is just settled into her current state Mm -hmm. and her changing her entire trajectory of her life. Yeah. So I think that could be really, really impactful. And and I think the other, if I could say too, it would be to help someone get out of a rut because I think a lot of people are still kind of stuck in the unknown yeah. of, man, things are finally starting to feel normal. But I swear, as soon as things start to feel normal, you know, something always comes up. So of course, yeah. what's next? I'm not sure. But, you know, I hope that if we can just help someone to get out of that, maybe negative headspace or or that situation that they just can't seem to shake. Yeah. That would be a huge success. And that's why, I mean, what you guys are doing and just the relationships that will come out of this Mm -hmm. are so important. I mean, you you guys, you you just don't know who you're going to meet. And when I say you, I mean, anybody listening to this, that's a woman that's going to go to this Dovetail event, you have no idea who you're going to meet. Yeah. It may be someone that literally changes the trajectory of your life. Yep. And that's not to say that if you're married, your helpmate or your spouse doesn't do that for you because of course they do. But sometimes you just need people that think like you, look like you and and struggle with some of the same challenges that you struggle with that help you to get to where you need to be. Yeah. And I'm really glad you said look like you because one of the big, big pieces of this is representation from yeah. everyone, everyone from every walk of life. That is so important. And I'm glad you said that because I meant to say it earlier and I forgot. No, that's fine. Well, yeah, (laughs) Yeah. no. Well, and and I'm sure your hope is that this, that you have like a 
almost a UN representation, yes. if you will, uh, at <laughs> this that. event. Yeah, so have a UN representation? I, I, I think that would be good. So, yeah. but no, this is great. I mean, Alex, I'm so thankful that you came down to sit with us today and, and just kind of share your heart and with this Dovetail event. So we wish you nothing but success with it. We hope that it really is that event that kind of jumps everything off so we can look back in a couple of years and say, I remember when, yeah. when you had that event. And then that led to something. And I, I see a hundred now, maybe it's a thousand mm -hmm. in a couple of years and the difference that it would make. Because I'm sure there's a thousand women oh, yeah. here in Northwest Arkansas <laughs> that could benefit from this type of time and focus mm -hmm. and effort. So yeah. thank you so much for, you. for for making a dream a reality. And we look forward with eagerness just to to root you on and to see the success that comes out of Dovetail. Thank you. Thank you so much. If people want to connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? So we are currently growing an Instagram so that we can connect with people daily. And it's just at Dovetail NWA. Okay. So very simple. And then we do have a website that's live and you can purchase tickets if you'd like, or you can grab a pay it forward ticket because one of the things we believe in is that everyone should be able to attend if they so choose whether, and we don't want money to be a financial um, issue for them. So, but I'm sorry, financial obstacle is what I meant to say, right. uh, but it's www.dovetailnwa.com. Perfect. So, yes. All right. So you've heard it here, Dovetail NWA at Dovetail NWA on Instagram and then dovetailnwa.com. Yep. Okay, perfect. And that is the website. We'll make sure that we put all of that on the show notes so that you know how to connect with Alex and the rest of her team as they continue to put this event together. I think it's going to be amazing. And, you know, we'll we'll certainly uh, be sharing out information about this event before it happens. And if you know somebody that once you've listened to this, you're like, I have a girlfriend that needs to hear this. Please share this episode with her. Share Alex's contact information with her and get her down to that event on the 19th of January, 2023 at Theater Squared. Yep. That's it. Perfect. Thank perfect. You. Well, thank you. Well, folks, there you have it. Another episode of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. I hope you enjoyed that. To learn more about our podcast, to check out our website, visit www.iamnorthwestarkansas.com. You can uh, follow us there. You can subscribe to our newsletter. And certainly we would, uh, our podcast is available on every major platform. So wherever you listen to podcasts, there you can find us. You can even ask Alexa to play the latest episode of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast and Alexa will oblige you. So how's that for a little artificial intelligence helping out, helping you out through your day? But that's it. And remember, our podcast comes out rain or shine every Monday. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and we'll see you back here next week for another episode of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. Peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week, available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas.